ان الحمد لله نحمد تعالى ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو محتد ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد حبت في الله continue on in our study of bulugh maram kitab jam the last chapter of the uh, text bulugh maram and we reached the chapter chapter 4 uh, the warning against evil conduct bab tarhib min masawi al ikhlaq al ikhlaq the chapter of warning against evil conduct and in our studies of this text and especially this last chapter kitab al jami the comprehensive book we saw that and like many things in the shara you find that there is nafi wa ithbat there is a negation and there's an affirmation for example allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms tawhid and he negates shirk as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa qada rabbuka ala ta'budu illa iyyahu wa bil walidayni ihsana and your lord has ordered you to worship none other than him in that statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with tawhid and negated shirk and so he the command the targhib what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes from us and urges us to do and exhorts us to practice is tawhid likewise in the, in that same ayat wa bil walidayni ihsana as we mentioned this ayat prior in our prior study in this cha- very same chapter that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands with and affirms that a person is righteous with his or her parents illa yahu bil walidayni ihsana and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayat he negates shirk he says so he begins by a nafi wa qada rabbuka ala ta'budu illa yahu and your lord has commanded that you worship that you do not worship anything or anyone except him so that's negating false worship which is shirk and affirming tawhid and since that is the the way and uh, that also this muallaf imam al hafiz uh al askalani or ibn hajar al askalani rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatul wasiya that this was his way and this is the way that he uh put the text or these ahadith of the message of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this form in that the the prior studies that we we took the prior chapters that we took in the same very book kitab jama were uh ahadith which were a part of uh targhib meaning they were hadith which encourage us to have righteous manners and this group of ahadith as ibn hajar has entitled it that's why he said bab at-tarhib min masawi al-akhlaq that this is the chapter of warning against evil conduct now he's bringing those things which are negative manners things to be aware from so he started with affirming what is righteous uh akhlaq righteous adab righteous manners <clears throat> and he ends 
in this bab, in this chapter, by uh, those things we should be warned against, those things we should avoid, and that is wicked mannerisms, wicked akhlaq. And the term here, akhlaq, it is from the root word or the plural of it, the plural of it in uh, of of this form, akhlaq. Akhlaq is a noun. The plural form is khuluk. Khuluk. And khuluk, this refers to the internal picture of oneself or the internal beautification of oneself, if, if you will. Those internal uh, characteristics. Akhlaq. And that means we're talking about manners and things related to the heart and actions of the heart. Whereas the term al-khalq that this refers to what is vahir or what is apparent. So akhlaq, we're talking about those internal characteristics which one should have. And in this bab and in this chapter, we're, we're warning against those internal characteristics one should avoid. We're talking about masawi akhlaq, you know, wicked uh, manners or wicked uh, conduct, evil conduct, and <clears throat> the chalk, as we said, this refers to the outward uh, appearance. So this is the difference between those uh, terms as uh, terminologies uh, as is referred to in the shara, and as is referred to in the Arabic language. And so moving on into the chapter, to the first hadith, and this is hadith 1277, narrated Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, avoid envy, for envy devours the good deeds just as fire devours firewood. Abu Dawood reported it. Ibn Majah reported something similar to the aforesaid hadith from the hadith of Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This hadith that Ibn Hajar rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatullahi wasi he began with in the chapter warning against evil conduct because this is one of the serious forms of evil conduct. And that which is, uh, that, and it is what is referred to as hasid, al hasid, meaning um, envy. And so, as, which, as it was mentioned in the hadith, the Prophet وسلم, said, avoid envy. And so, here, this is a prohibition from the Prophet, وسلم, a stern command to avoid this characteristic, letting us know that it is from the Masawi al-Akhlaq. It is from the wicked mannerisms which change and alter the behavior of the believer to something wicked. And that as, as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should do everything possible to adhere to those commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those things which are from husnul khulq from good manners <coughs> alhamdulillah and do those things and do as much as possible to avoid the wicked masawi akhlaq the wicked manners so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said iyakum wal hasad wal hasad this sentence is a sentence as they say, Jumla ta tahdiriya. 
that this is a sentence or a statement which is a statement of warning, of stern warning and admonition to avoid this characteristic. And so to know and understand al-hasid, we can look at three ways in which hasid it manifests itself. The first way is an yatamanna an tuzul al-ni'ma an ghayrihi ila nafsi. So the first and the way most people view the term al-hasid when we look for a textbook defini definition, if you will, most people refer to al-hasid as referring to uh, wishing when a person wishes or hopes that a na'ma, you know, a favor, a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is removed from someone else and given to them. So this is the first surah or the first way in which a person can exercise hasid and this is what is well known to most of the people that you have an envy in which you want some blessing to be removed from someone else and given to you. The second type of hasid is an yatamanna az-zawwal ni'matillahi on so the second way in which hasid al hasid manifests itself is to when a person hopes or wishes for the removal of one of Allah's blessings from a particular person to be given to another person. So for example, if you have two friends, one's name is Zaid, one name is Amr. Or one name is Omar, whatever. And Zaid has a new car, a beautiful new brand new car, 2018, almost coming on 2019. And you wish and hope from envy to remove that blessing from Zaid and that it be given to uh, uh, Omar, your other friend, because Omar doesn't have as much money. Omar is a closer friend to you. You're kind of, you're, you're, it's a type of jealous, jealous, it's jealousy and envy of the blessing that Allah has given to Zaid. So you want that removed from Zaid and you want it given to Omar. Okay? This is still a type of hasid, but it's a little bit different than the first, uh, the first example of hasid that we mentioned, which is to remove the ni'mah from someone to be given to yourself. And that's the ultimate form of, of envy and a person, uh, you know, just almost a, uh, an, an, an evil form of greed. The last surah of hasid is hoping to remove the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from a particular person mutlaqan meaning that you want that ni'mah that Allah has favored Zaid with for example that new car you want it to be removed from Zaid by all means and, and you don't care if it comes to you you don't care if it's given to someone else you just want you have enough envy in your heart and hatred in your heart or jealousy in your heart that you want it to be removed from that person this is another type of wicked hasid, and this is mas masawi al akhlaq. This is wicked conduct and wicked a wicked characteristic, a wicked mannerism, which the mu'min is far away from and must strive to remove that from his or herself from their hearts. Remove yazil hadhi he. Uh, this is a trait, this wicked trait must be removed from our hearts. And the trait of Hasid, in general, as we know, it's a wicked trait, and there's a lot of wickedness that stems from it, from this type of envy. 
and this type of uh, feeling is uh, nothing but wickedness comes from that. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullahi alayhi, rahmatullahi alayhi, he said, Al-Hasid, karahatu na'matillahi ala al-ghayr. He said that al-Hasid, you know, envy, it is detesting or disliking the blessings of Allah. Remember, this is Allah's favor. Allah has favored so-and-so with such and such thing. Uh, that to be removed from that, that individual. And so this shows the, it's intrinsic that it's a wicked characteristic and a lot of wickedness uh, results from possessing uh, this trait. And in the hadith, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, فَإِنَّ الْحَسَدْ يَأْكُلُ الْحَسَنَاتِ كَمَا تَأْكُلُ النَّارِ الْحَطَبِ The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam explained to us what hasid does. The evil result of hasid as far as one of the end results of this life, but you experience that in the Hereafter, the Prophet ﷺ said, Verily, Hasid, it eats the good deeds. It eats the good that you do. Similar to the way fire burns up its fuel, burns up firewood. And we know that when you are in a dry climate, for example, uh, or you need to make a fire and you have very excessively dry firewood or small uh, sticks or what have you, that that catches very, very quickly and it burns up uh, ra at a rapid pace. And as we see in many parts of the world, especially in the United States, that during this past uh, time period, the summer, that there were many wildfires. And those, they were raging wildfires. Some people lost their homes. People lost, or many people lost their homes. People lost their lives. It, it damaged, uh, it caused uh, health problems. Even across uh, to various parts of the country, it had enough effect because the wildfires spread so rapidly. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made it, uh, an excellent example showing us that how rapid this trait of wickedness, this trait of hasid, how it burns up your good deeds. So this shows us for the mu'min, the mu'min must give great importance to avoiding uh, uh, envy by any and all means. From the benefits of this hadith and the mufasid, or the wickedness of, of hasid, or of hasid, is that this is a trait that the one who possesses this wicked trait, that they are showing displeasure with the wisdom, the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the wisdom of Allah wa Jal, and the hukmillah, and the qada of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That a person who experienced hasid, uh, this envy that they are showing a type of displeasure with the decree of Allah and with the divine wisdom in, uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he knows best and that he has favored some of his creation over others that this person is showing displeasure with that and that shows you how serious of a sin that is and how does that manifest itself because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when a person realizes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khalaqa kulli shay and Kadir, that he subhanahu wa ta'ala created all things and he is over all things omnipotent and he controls subhanahu wa ta'ala everything and it is from his divine wisdom that he gives and raises up whomsoever he pleases and gives his favor to whomsoever he pleases the person who has has it in their heart they are rejecting this because they are saying it is, they are almost, it's implicit that they are, by showing their displeasure, that they are saying, no, it would be better if this favor was given to me. Or this favor was given to my friend, or this favor was just removed from that person. Okay, this is the type 
Uh, this is the Mevmum, the, the trait which uh, Sifa Mevmumah is a, a wicked trait that we must avoid. And it shows that the one who has this, uh, this trait, possesses this trait of Hasid, that they are showing a type of displeasure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree. Another benefit derived from this hadith and showing the wickedness of Al-Hasid is that Al-Hasid also, it, it, uh, it decreases our Iman. By having envy, it depletes and it decreases and it takes away from your Iman, from your faith. Because when a person uh, wish, you know, this shows, again, as we mentioned, it shows a displeasure with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that you have something in your heart towards it, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hikmah. And also this is a type of ma'asi. This is also a type of sinfulness. And we also know this because the Prophet sallallahu said that this trait eats up one's good deeds, similar to the way fire eats up uh, firewood or fuel. And likewise, what is the opposite of that, which shows that Iman fluctuate and shows that people have different levels of Iman and that it is from Iman, which is the opposite trait, which is the want for your brother, what you want for yourself, which is a hadith we already studied in the Husn al-Khulq, in the good manners, the righteous manners, and that is the hadith in which the Prophet والسلام, said, La yu'minu ahadakum Hatta you hibbu li akhihi ma you li nafsi. Ma you hibbu li nafsi. That one of you does not truly believe, that means they don't have complete iman, until they want for their brother what they want for themselves, or they love for their brother what they love for themselves. And so, by having hasid and wanting the na'mah to be taken away from your brother, and given to you or just taken away from them this is of course the opposite trait and this shows that this is uh, a person they're a manifestation of their weak iman and it is a type of ma'asi a type of sinfulness another benefit of this hadith of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an illustration of al-hasid how it is a wicked trait is that we know and we see that al-hasid as a trait, envy, that most of the time it is a characteristic which is illustrated or manifested by a person oppressing another person or wanting to oppress another person. It's a type of uh, of taking their right. It's a type of usurping their right or what Allah has given them from His favors, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this shows that most of the time it's a type of buggy. It's a type of, uh, of oppression and a, uh, a wicked trait in which a person wishes to remove the favor of someone else. Another uh, benefit of this hadith Show, uh, and is and and also illustrating the the wickedness of al-hasid is al-hasid this envy uh, is always a result of someone's displeasure and their anxiety and their their displeasure and anxiety with themselves they're not satisfied with themselves they are dissatisfied with their situation dissatisfied with themselves. And it's a type of stress and anxiety that they manifest because now they are manifesting it and they wish to take the blessing of someone else. This shows that their heart is not open. They're not satisfied, they're not happy because they want to remove the na'mah from someone else. Sometimes just in and of itself, as long as he doesn't have that favor, then I'm happy. Even if it doesn't go to them, as long as he doesn't have a good car, a new car, as long as he doesn't have a new house, I'm happy. So this shows us what a wicked trait and that this is a trait which illustrates 
that the person that the person who possesses this trait that they are dissatisfied with their own lives and their own selves. Another result of al hasid of envy is that it shows also with that displeasure that a person is busy counting and looking to the favor of someone else in order to remove it instead of counting the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them with. And a last important point with regards to Al-Hasid is that Al-Hasid seems to be the first recorded manifestation of this characteristic is when a person uh, is when Iblis the shaitan was showed his hasid to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. So then the person who has hasid, who has this envy, they're actually following the sunnah of who? The sunnah of the shaitan. And so this shows us the danger of this trait of al hasid and that when it comes to us, we should strive our utmost to avoid it. And this is the hasid al madhmuma the sinful type, and that's why it's in this bab, uh, bab tarheeb min masawi al-akhlaq, the chapter of warning against wicked, uh, wicked uh, conduct. It's in this chapter because it is uh, a type of wickedness. However, the Prophet sallallahu mentioned in another hadith that there is a type of good hasid, if you will. And so the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, La hasid illa fil fi ithnain. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said there isn't hasid or there's no hasid, meaning there's no good hasid or allowable hasid except when it is in two situations. And that is the person who wishes, meaning that they don't wish to remove the ni'mah from the person, but they wish to have the ni'mah similar to them, meaning they wish to have wealth like them so they could spend it in the cause of Allah. So this is a good... Uh, jealousy, if you will, or a good desiring of this characteristic that someone else possesses, but it does not entail removing it from them. So it's different than what we generally refer to as hasid in the shara. And the second characteristic, the second uh, trait that a person uh, can be desirous of and covetous of when they see it in someone else is to be covetous of the talib al-ilm or covetous of the, the, the scholar. That a person wishes that they had the blessing of knowledge like him or like her so that way they could give da'wah in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that way they can understand the Qur'an and call the people to it. They can call from the book of Allah and from the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So those are some of the important uh, benefits that we gain from this hadith. And in the next hadith, <clears throat> hadith 1278, narrated Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the strong man is not the good wrestler, but the strong man is he who controls himself when he is angry, mutafqan alayhi. This hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, the hadith of Abi Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, in which the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam clarified or articulated that who the truly strong person is. It isn't the one who's a good, necessarily good in body or strong in body, but it's the one who's really strong in character. And that character is from husn al is from good manners. And that strong character means that this is an individual who can control his or herself when they become angry. And this is exactly what the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, iyyakum wal hasid. <coughs> or uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, laysa <coughs> shadidu bi sur'ati. إِنَّمَا شَدِيدُ الَّذِي يَمْلَكُ نَفْسُهُ عِنْدَ الْغَدَبِ متفق عليه 
So the Prophet said that it is not the strong man. He's not the one who's shadid, the one who's stern. Uh, <clears throat> you know, and this is, he's not the one who, the, the strong man or the stern person is not the one who's an excellent wrestler, for example. But rather, the strong one or the stern one is the one who controls himself <clears throat> when they become angry. And so that is an important trait and the reason Imam al hafiz Ibn Hajr al-Asqalani the reason he put it in this uh, this bab or this chapter the chapter Bab al-Tarheeb min Masawi al-Akhlaq or the chapter of warning against wicked conduct he put that in there to show that ghadab, quick anger quickly becoming angry is from the wicked traits that one should avoid so he's showing and distinguishing between what is true strength is to be able to control one's anger from this hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam we see <coughs> That, <clears throat> that true strength, the strength that we want to be concerned with as believers, the spiritual strength, is that a person is able to control his or her self uh, when they become angry. And in fact, at all times, that this is a trait of the believer, that they're in control of themselves. They're not a person who flies off the handle easily. And that is what is marhub, what is mahbub, what is, uh, what is um, uh, a beloved trait, and it is a desirable trait. And that is to be able to control oneself. And especially, as the Prophet said in this, uh, in this hadith, under the circumstances of anger. And in another hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which he also illustrated, which also really falls under the same chapter and illustrates the point that we're trying to drive home, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, a companion came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said, "Usini," he said, "Advise me." The Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam said, "La tadlam. do not become angry." Then he said a second time, "Qala usini," he said. Advise me. The Prophet ﷺ said, La tadbab. And then he, for a third time, he said, Usini. You know, he wanted more. He wanted more. The Prophet ﷺ said, La tadbab. Do not become angry. So that shows us if the Prophet ﷺ gave the same advice in the same, during the same occasion, that shows the importance of avoiding the trait of of uh, 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 in, in one trying to control their anger because we're human from the human frailties we're going to become angry at times and that is not what is sinful to become angry but it's when one doesn't control oneself when the one loses control of his or herself and becomes angry just for dunya uh, for things for worldly things for foolishness instead of anger for the sake of of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by guarding the commandments of Allah to wa ta'ala and when we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandments being violated and this is very few most of the people they don't know and they are not conscious of and they're not aware of and they don't really give it importance to become angry when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, laws are being flaunted or his the when people are involved in sin most people they don't it doesn't disturb them it only disturbs them if it's against something against their personal property or something like this you know it's usually a more uh, issues that deal with uh, worldly events and worldly issues instead of the spiritual uh, side of our religion so we see that from the negative traits is one becoming angry uh, for nothing and going beyond the bounds 
and doing it quickly. Al-Ghadab, ayu al ahabba is divided into three types that the scholars they mention that this anger ghadab is of three is divided into three uh, cases if you will the first case is that when a person is angry which is our the, the standard anger that most of the people feel for whatever reason but they're able to control his or herself so then they're responsible for what they do and they are able to control themselves they're angry but they don't lose control so they don't become for example a person of road rage you know someone cut them off they then they pull over the car and they go bust their window out or they pull a pistol out no the person who uh the average person is not afflicted by road rage to that extent they may become angry at someone cutting them off, someone doing something dangerous, someone, some, some, someone doing something foolish, but they're able to control themselves. And they don't transgress the bounds and begin to curse or whatever the case may be. So the point is that this is one type of anger. Another type of anger is what they refer to muntaha al ghadab It is the full extent of anger. And this is when a person is unaware of what they do. So some people, as they say, seeing red, that they become so angry about something, they lose total control, sometimes over the smallest things. This is something which is medhmoon, but some people, they can't help themselves. That's the, their, their nature. They don't know how to control themselves. But anyway, that this is... Uh, the, the, the point of mentioning these types of anger because there is they, uh, that these types of anger they are attached to Sharia Ahkam that for example the issue of Talaq and we'll, we'll talk about it shortly after we mention the third uh, case scenario so this uh, second scenario we mentioned is when a person cannot control themselves they have reached a point they don't know what they did they don't know what they said they lose their mind in a sense. It's a, almost a type of temporary insanity, you could say. And this is a, a level of anger that some people reach. The third type is that which is in between those two types of anger. And this could be a person who becomes severely anger, but this anger does not... Uh, does not control them. Uh, so the the first category of anger, when somebody can control themselves, they become anger, angry, and maybe it's but they, they can control themselves. Then of course, the ahkam related to that takes place. So for example, uh, or let me give you and then in the third. Uh, example we mentioned and this is when a person becomes severely angry but they still know what they're doing and said in this situation for example if a man divorces his wife out of anger he says you are anti thalic or you are divorced and he's very he's very angry about what happened between them they got in a fight he could even be wrong whatever the case may be but he was very angry and he uttered divorce Uh, the fact that he he can he although he was angry but he is aware of what he did then this person divorce takes place however in the scenario which we said which is the second scenario in which a person does not control themselves the scholars will ask or the judge will ask and find out and make a ruling based upon his level of anger. Meaning, were you aware of what you said? Uh, did you, you know, uh, basically, basically they'll look to that. You know, if he was to such a, a state of anger where it's almost a type of, uh, almost you could say a type of almost temporary insanity. Some people become to that level. Then in this scenario, uh, they're, uh, the scholars say, in the most correct view, is that, uh, the 
divorce does not take place. So a person who becomes very angry, he doesn't even, he doesn't even know where he where he is and what he's doing really, and he pronounces the. Uh, he divorces his wife, you know, pronounces divorce upon her, then this anger does not take, this uh, divorce does not take place due to his really not being fit to pronounce that divorce. He's unaware. He doesn't know what he said. His anger had reached to, to such an extent. And so these are uh, illustrations of how this... Uh, this affects the hukum. It affects the uh, how how this affects uh, the rulings when, uh, for example, in the situation of divorce and uh, other Sharia rulings. So the level of anger, and this is the benefit of knowing uh, about that there are different types of anger and so on and so forth as related to this hadith. From the fawaid or benefits of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that this hadith shows us a superiority and the greatness of a person who controls their anger. That when a person becomes angry, they're able to control themselves. This shows that this is a praiseworthy Characteristic because we're all frail and we all become angry for various uh, reasons. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith encourages us to be able to control ourselves uh, when something is affecting us. So this is with anger in this situation or in, in relation to this hadith, but this could be any trade. It could be also when, for example, a death in the family. You know, are you going to become so saddened and re overreact to the extent you kill yourself or you do something crazy, become reckless or what have you? So this shows the importance of that it's a praiseworthy characteristic to control oneself and this hadith encourages us to do so, to not be reckless, to not be quick to react and quick to especially to be angry or to become over emotional. <clears throat> Another benefit of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is this shows us that the person who controls their anger, you know, when they become angry, that they actually control themselves and and can restrain themselves, that they have a higher status and they're stronger especially spiritually than the one who's an excellent wrestler an excellent boxer excellent mma practitioner whatever the case may be the one who can control themselves they're much better and in fact when you look at the way how foolish some of the people i can think of certain athletes for example uh, certain athletes we don't need to name names that uh are in the top of their sport, but outside of the ring, outside of their sport, they behave so irrational and so foolish from so much pompousness and arrogant, thinking that they are the strongest and that they are the best, but the one who's much better than them. From a spiritual perspective, which is the most important perspective to have, is the one who can control his or herself. Because look how foolish that person looks, even with all their wealth, with their excellence in the sport, their superiority in uh, in fighting, for example, or whatever sport they partake in, but outside of the ring and outside of their sport, they can't even control themselves over a cup of coffee. They become arrogant, taking chairs and busting out windows and threatening people and going to jail over foolish things. And that shows the spiritual weakness. So the true strength is the one who can control his or herself. Another last uh, benefit of this hadith is it shows the husna ta'lim of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the excellent manner in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was an educator and that he was excellent at clarifying for the people those things 
which they could relate to and it giving them examples in his ta'lim, in his ta'lim of the sunnah, of the, his sunnah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is uh, showing his excellent ta'lim. This is something they could relate to. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he illustrated in this hadith that the person who is the most deserving of the characteristic of being shadid and being strong and being stern it isn't the one who's a, a, an excellent fighter but it's the one who can control his or her anger and we ask all the almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil until the next lesson wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh